Good morning. Welcome to Krishna's classroom. Let us uh, continue with the Lebesgue integration theory, which I kept aside way back in July 23. For some reason, namely, I had to make a recording of of uh, a series of lectures on on uh, metric spaces now that series is complete i am returning back to this okay so we were in the 62nd episode of debug integration theory which dealt with differentiation and integration. In fact, we have considerably advanced in that in considering this problem. But <laughs> now I thought that since I am returning to it after a long time, maybe worthwhile to do a a brief review of uh, whatever we have done in this under this chapter so that i am at least comfortable with what i am going to uh, later on. okay so this is essentially a review of uh, of what we did in the last 3 4 lectures in this series okay so let us now start with what we want so let me just give a, a give a, a introduction that what the problem is all about the problem is the following suppose you have you know that classically the relation between a function and its integral is known as that the integral of the function when differentiated will give you the original function that you started with. Okay. So it's simply the following. Given a function f On some interval, capital F, F derivative, this is the question that we have. And initially, in the early days of, uh, say, differential and integral calculus, it was thought that because we were dealing only with the uh, elementary functions and that to smooth functions, it was thought that given a function, there always existed a function capital S such that f derivative is equal to f. And I think it, the, the sort of uh, feeling at that time was that every function can be differentiated and every function can be integrated. It's kind of very elementary, but false notions existed. 
so this problem is a is an inverse problem differentiation is something given a function to differentiate there is a very, very there is a method using limits to get the derivative the integration process is the inverse problem that is given f you have to find capital f such that capital f derivative is equal to f this is often difficult although there are more the class of integrable functions is far more far bigger than class of differentiable functions <coughs> that's a fact so this is essentially solving a differential equation okay. probably the first differential equation that was written after the, the advent of uh, differential and integral calculus okay but that's not what we are concerned about now the problem that we are concerned about is given f does there always exist in f capital f that's that capital f derivative is equal to now with the deeper understanding of the concept of integration and reframing the whole thing in terms of what is called a riemann integral this classical uh, realization had to be abandoned although it was mostly a large class of functions it did work but it did not work everywhere because one could produce a function f small f which is riemann integrable such that this equation <coughs> did not hold everyone because the problem is that capital f so defined may not be differential at so the and of course earlier it used to be called that capital f used to be referred to as the anti derivative of of small f so this relation did not universally hold so the relation between the function and its anti derivative did not hold so that is a problem major problem okay then of course you start asking questions where it for what class of functions it did hold etc and these are things that we have already discussed now in the context of further 
advancement to Lebeck integration theory, we would like to ask the same question. Okay. Given f, which is Lebeck integrable, does there exist a capital F such that capital F derivative is equal to small f? Lebesgue integrable. The question that you are asking. Now you know that it cannot be universally true, but you will have to have some kind of restrictions. So, under what circumstances such relations would hold? Now, this is our prime concern. Now, we were exploring this in our. So, let us just recall what I what I want to do in this talk is merely state results, possibly look at some examples and then come to a stage where I have left in my lecture uh, 63, sorry, 62 and so that from 65 onwards I would be taking up with all details. So, this is a review in that sense. Now, let me just. So, we begin with the Lebesgue theorem. If a function F is monotone. We are talking about real value functions on the open interval. Then it is differentiable. Almost everywhere, we have already discussed this expression, almost everywhere on table, which means such a function has its derivative existing everywhere on the interval a b except on a set of measure 0 that is Lebesgue measure 0. So, this is the result. So, for all monotone functions, all monotone functions on the interval a b, one can assert that it has its derivative existing everywhere except possibly on a set of measure 0. So, let us to go further you can say even more than that and one can one has a corollary which goes further and coming to this particular question. Let f be an increasing function <coughs> on 
on the closed bounded interrelated. Then F derivative, you know it is on the open interval, the F derivative exists almost everywhere, is integrated over B. That means the derivative of f is an integrable function over a b and Integral a to b f derivative is bounded by. Now you see that we are assuming f is an increasing function and therefore f b minus f a is non negative. And this simply says that f derivative. You know that it is an increasing function that for f derivative is in general in wherever it exists, it is going to be non negative, and the integral is going to be non negative. Therefore, but what happens is this gives an upper estimate for this integral, and this is a this is a step towards proving the what is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. So, for all monotonically increasing functions, we have this particular inequality valid on the term. Now, one remark is that in the absence of The monotonicity assumption on F we cannot. Infer F derivative is integral. Is integrable on suppose we simply assume F is continuous, then this F derivative. Integrability of F derivative cannot be assured. Now we give an example. Look at the following example. On the interval zero one. Let f of x be defined by x square sine 1 upon x square x not equal to 0 and equal to 0 at x equal to 0. So x square sine 1 by x square. Now this means 
the function is very rapidly oscillating as x goes to 0. Nevertheless, it is a continuous function because you see that this is always bounded by 1 and therefore as x tends to 0, this function goes to 0. Therefore, see the f is a continuous function on the power 0 to 1. What about its derivative? And these oscillatory functions are the ones that bring in the, the, the need for such a caution while making a statement. Now, we see that F is bounded continuous on, in fact you do not have to say this bounded because it is once it is continuous on 0 1 then it is automatically bounded. Now f is not monotone. It is it is rapidly oscillatory oscillatory as x ten to zero. Now the graph of the function if you try to plot this is the function will be some. It is a very smooth function, but but uh, it is going to be uh, bounded by 1 and it is smooth is differentiable everywhere. The only point where you have some doubt about it, whether the derivative exists, is the four. So at when x is not equal to zero, the derivative is it's a it's a very well defined f derivative of x is defined as two x sine x square minus 2 by x cos now you see this term gives trouble as x goes to 0 on the other hand f derivative of at 0 one can independently calculate this turns out to be 0 because you are taking uh, f0 minus f h divided by h as h tends to 0 and that is easy to work out and it turns out to be 0. So, you see that f dash exists everywhere. f is differentiable everywhere. On zero one, but the derivative is not is not continuous. Thank <laughs> you.
at x equals to 0. Okay. Now, f derivative is not integral. On account of the non integrability of So that's the difficulty. So the function is is uh, has a very has a singularity here and so highly oscillatory, and the integral does not exist. That's it. Now to investigate this problem, so we have seen that see the monotonicity that we have assumed is something that cannot be done away with. You want to write a general result. Okay. So, this example, in fact, gives you some insight into the problem. Now, we introduced what are called the functions of bounded weight. Well, let us designate it by V V <sighs> So we So we make the definition after that we want to introduce what is called right? the the Jordan theorem. Let F be a real valued function defined on the on the compact interval. That is on the close bounded interval A B and <coughs> be a partition of that is That's the partition P. Now we define then the variation of F with respect to 
the partition P is defined by So that's the definition of the variation of f with respect to. Now we define what is called the total variation. The total variation on A B denoted by TVAB on AB is defined by is defined by <clears throat> supremum over of B F P that is the variation of F associated with the partition P and then the supremum taken over all p p is a partition of that is called the total variation of f over the interval AP. Now this supremum exists or maybe finite. Now we define what is called the functions of bounded variation. A real valued function F on the closed bounded interval on the close bounded interval is said to be of bounded variation on AB
provide the total variation of f on a b is by f. This is what you call a function of bounded. So, this is the condition for the function to be of bounded relation. Now, we will be let us designate this class of functions by a notation. So, let us designate it by functions of bounded variation. On. So that is about the notation. Okay. So we know now what a function of bounded variation is. Now let us see what class of functions belong to this. Now for the first thing is that observe that all monotone on a b belong to it's a white class all monotone functions are there now the second type is that even bigger class let f be Lipschitz which is continuous Maybe. Then F belongs to. Now, what we mean by Lipschitz continuous is For some k, now this is Lipschitz continuity, slightly stronger form of continuity that we have. All Lipschitz continuous functions are monotonically, sorry, are of bounded. That's fine. Now, the question that automatically comes is this Is it true that
or continuous functions. On the interval lab. So let us consider the following example. This context we look at this example. You take the following function. Pi by two x one and equal to zero. So, so this function is now defined on the interval. So, f is now defined continuous. Again, you can see this rapid oscillation coming towards zero. Now here, the the, the oscillation is is uh, controlled by the function y equal to plus or minus x. Okay, so it's something like this. This is the sort of function. It's bounded by plus x, y equal to x, and y equal to minus x. And the function that you would be working on. Oscillations and there will be a rapid oscillation. It's a continuous function, nevertheless. But this function is not of bounded dimension. Does not belong to zero. So not all continuous functions belong to maybe be zero. One or one can quickly give a proof. So, a proof is let we give a partition Pn one by three, one by two. Let this be a partition of zero one. Now then you see that V P N this you can you can work out this to be one plus one by two plus one by n, which does not uh, as n goes to infinity, this is the harmonic series which does not convert. Therefore, f is not this series. This. Because it is actually sigma one. 
<coughs> Therefore, So that completes the that outlines the proof of that statement. So not all continuous functions are functions of bounded. What are the properties of these functions of bounded variation? Significant properties. In fact, in this context, Jordan's theorem you said this. It's a fascinating result. Right. A function f is of bounded variation on a closed bounded interval a b if and only if it is the difference of difference of Two monotonically increasing so what you can do is f can be written as g minus h <laughs> where both g and h are monotonically increasing functions on the interval okay so this is a beautiful representation here that you have which gives further insight into the properties of such uh, further insight into properties of such functions. <laughs> okay, let us now explore that. What are the outcomes of this? And see, one of the things that you can immediately infer is that the function, every function of bounded variation is <coughs> differentiable almost everywhere on the interval. Why? Because g is an increasing function, h is an increasing function. They have, they are differentiable almost everywhere on the interval a, b. And therefore their difference is also differentiable almost everywhere on the interval a, b. Because the, the Suppose G is not differentiable on a set of measure 0, say A, and H on another set of measure 0, B, then A union B is the set on which possibly this function is not differentiable. And that is a set of measure 0 if both F and G are sets of measure 0. Okay. So what is the, the the consequence of this? This is given in the corollary. If f belongs to then it is differentiable. Oh, 
almost everywhere. On the open interval A. And furthermore, F derivative which exists almost everywhere is integrable yeah, back integrable over that's the consequence of that. So it takes you quite deep uh, into the properties. So so it's a function of bounded if f is a function of bounded variation on the closed bounded interval a b then we infer that it's a difference of two increasing functions on the other hand it's a very powerful theorem so it goes either way if a function is the difference of two increasing functions then that is a function of bounded variation. So, it is a characterization of the property of uh, the functions of bounded variation and it is a very deep result uh, by Jordan, it is known as Jordan's theorem. And the immediate consequence is that f is such an f is differentiable almost everywhere, maybe and you can go even further and say that such an f derivative is integrable on it. Okay, so these two things come out immediately. I think we have already proved this here. Okay, so we now we just give a example, I and mean, which may be worthwhile to look at. Some example which is worthwhile to discuss. For alpha, eta positive. Numbers define define the function f x equal to x to the power alpha x to the power alpha sin 1 upon x to the power beta. So this type of function we have looked at earlier and this is for 0 less than x less than or equal to 1 and uh, equal to 0 equal to 0. So consider this function now where alpha and beta are just positive elements. Now one can prove certain facts about it. I am not going into the proof of that. It's a good exercise and uh, it helps you also to understand these functions. <sighs> if alpha is greater than beta f is on zero therefore f derivative exists almost everywhere and f derivative is integrable on 
Okay. Well, this is a continuous function because as long as you take alpha positive, it's a continuous function. So you are talking about a continuous function. And uh, if alpha is greater than beta, then you have this function of bounded variation. Therefore, the conclusions of the previous theorem, that is Jordan's theorem, and its corollary do hold. Namely, f is differentiable almost everywhere, and f derivative is integrable at interval 0, 1. But if alpha is greater than or equal to beta, then f does not belong to. But you can show that if derivative is not one can prove that f derivative exists everywhere, but it's not an integrable function. Okay, so this is something that you can now we go further. And <clears throat> try to introduce a new class, namely absolutely continuous functions. Now we shall designate it by A C on the interval A. So this will be the designation that we use. <coughs> so let us define this. It goes beyond continuity. Now absolute continuity demands certain certain control over the rapid oscillation as we shall see in the examples. So let us first define what this property is all about. In fact, all absolutely continuous functions are continuous functions. And you can also later prove that they are of functions of bounded deviation. Therefore, all the results that we have as we have asserted about uh, the bounded functions of bounded variation do hold for absolutely continuous uh, functions over the interval A. <laughs> so let us define this first. A real valued function f on a closed bounded interval. A B is said to be absolutely continuous. On A B provided for each epsilon positive there is a delta.
delta positive such that for every for every finite disjoint disjoint sub collection of opening doors maybe if sig part k equal to less than delta then f of less than what does this mean when I mean, you compare this with the definition of continuity given epsilon there exists a delta such that mod fx minus fy is less than epsilon whenever mod x minus y is less than delta now this this does the following we just demonstrate what more it does suppose you have a function which oscillates rapidly <coughs> now you see that if you take a delta interval which is controlled in delta and if you take only at the end points then the difference between the values of f at those points is going to be can be made small because by continuity you can do that but then you want some more stringent restriction on this namely suppose you were to demand that it is true for such a collection of disjoint intervals this happens what happens is if you take an interval like this now you see that the difference is going to be quite substantial here and then they are going to add up possibly because we want for all sub collections of this kind uh, with this less than delta this sum has to be less than delta. okay so this is a it's a greater demand that we make on the oscillation so the it cannot be far too oscillate this is the whole point that we want. Now an example is a very sophisticated example which is which we have discussed earlier and it talks about this is the the counter A back function phi is increasing and continuous on zero. 
is a continuous function, it's also an increasing function. Therefore, you see that this is going to be a function of bounded variation. However, it is not, it is not absolutely Now you see this function is a continuous function, it is an increasing function, monotonic increasing function the way in which you define because it is all associated with the Cantor set that you have. I am not going into the details of that but it is readily available and it is worthwhile to look at this and you see that this function is automatically a function of bounded variation on 0, 1. And therefore, all the consequential properties follow of bounded functions of bounded variation. But this is not an absolutely function. So, this is an example of a function which is a bounded variation, but not absolutely continuous. It is also a continuous function. So, you can look into the article 6.4. Of Ryden. There may be other books also discussing this. Fits per. <laughs> now one can immediately write the following theorem. The function f is Lipschitz continuous on KB, then <coughs> It is absolutely so you are assured that there is a large class of continuous functions which are absolutely continuous. So, this example that we have cited above shows that there is there are continuous functions which may not be absolutely continuous. Remark there exists absolutely continuous function Which may not be for example, you take this function, take consider x to the power one by three, one day interval zero. Then F does not belong to Lipschitz zero one. F belongs to absolutely continuous and therefore continuous functions on the zero. So this also shows that. One can show that all Lipschitz continuous functions are absolutely continuous. One can show that uh, 
what we have is this Lipschitz continuous on AB on the interval. So, notary continuous functions form a larger class than Lipschitz continuous functions. Okay. Now, further, we have the following theorem. So, give an example. We have the following theorem, which gives some insight and connects the absolutely continuous function with the functions of bounded variation. Let F <coughs> then F is the difference of two to increasing absolutely continuous to increasing functions G and H where G comma H belong both absolute because and now a consequence of this is that consequently F belongs to because it is the difference of two increasing functions and which are absolutely continuous and therefore F is equal to G is increasing, H is increasing, and therefore you see that these are functions of bounded variation, therefore F is of bounded. So all absolutely continuous functions are of bounded variation, therefore the properties of uh, functions of bounded variation do hold for all absolutely continuous functions. And more, more than that, we see that F is a difference of two absolutely continuous <coughs> increasing functions. So these are all the properties that we have. Now our topic of interest for further discussion will be the functions of bounded variation, sorry, the functions of absolutely continuous functions on intervals A, B and there clearly you see that you have an indication now because the E and G and H are differentiable almost everywhere, therefore F is differentiable almost everywhere. What about the derivative? Is it integral? This is the question that we are going to take up. Next. Therefore, let us uh, for the time being conclude with this statement that AC
this is where we stop. Now we take up further analysis of such functions and then look at the differentiability of such functions and then look up the integrability of such derivatives, derivatives of such functions and then try to connect the function with its derivative through the integral. I mean this is the main theme that we are going to pursue in the coming lectures. So thank you very much.